Why hello YouTube. Well, <clears throat> today we have another case unboxing. And what I'm going to do with it is uh, replace that crappy server case you saw with this one. Grateful42 got this for me for my birthday. And thanks, man. Again, I really appreciate it. I'll have to get you something... I'll have to get you something nice when your birthday rolls around. But anyhow, <clears throat> it's another Lee and Lee case. It's a Lee and Lee PCA04. It is a micro ATX case. And it's very similar to the K7B from the looks of it. So, I think without further ado, we should take a look at it. First, I'll, screw it, I'll just get these off. <clears throat> There we are. Ah, there's the case. Very nice. You can just see a glimpse of it here. It looks much like the K7B does. And here's the case. Unboxed for your viewing pleasure. You can see there's a fan in the top. It looks much like the K7B does on the front. Right down to the two little LEDs right there. There you go. And the ports on the top are interesting. You have eSATA, USB 3 and USB 2, audio, power, and reset. There you have it. Then there's this fan at the top. Which looks like it's a 120 millimeter. Let's look at the back. The board mounts up here, as you can see, it's a bottom-mounted power supply model, so make sure that you have adequate ventilation under the uh, actual thing. It has uh, ventilated PCI slots, which is awful nice, and a spot for a fan back here, in case you need one, but I'm not probably not going to need a fan back here because of the fan at the top. So let's open up the sign and see what goodies lie within. Oh my, there's actually a plastic washer thing. Focus on my finger, you derp. There we go. That's odd. Side panels come off just like the K7B. In these cases, seem to be pretty similar. Well, there we are. It has two fans pre installed right there, which is nice. Just like the K7B. This is like a, a micro ATX version of the K7B, although look at these. Oh, wow. That's nice. Huh. Huh, look at that. That's nifty. I like that a lot. Of course, there's a uh, a box of goodies zip-tied in here, so let me get the knife and cut that real quick. There, I got the box of goodies out. This is likely screws and brackets and things like that. The uh, the hard drives also take these washer things, so and getting those in there shouldn't be a problem. And I, this is an improvement upon the K7B big time. You can actually take the hard drive like caddy thing out completely. That's really nifty. I like that a lot. So this should be an interesting case. I'm going to be using this for a server. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hard drive bays, and that is the reason I'd be using this for a server. Seven hard drive bays. I'll be using five of them, uh, and the drives you will see shortly. So, let's get the other case out and gut it apart. <laughs> Here is the case the server is currently in. It is a very, very crappy cheap. I think I got this case for twenty or thirty dollars off the of Newegg, and the reason I got it was just for it laughs because it has a it has a handle. It's kind of a LAN party case, at least designed to be, but it's made of very 
cheap flimsy metal and other other assortment of things. I lost a, fan, a panel, so I had to put one on there that doesn't look quite right. And I have a very, very off-color DVD drive in here. <clears throat> a, uh, a white Pioneer slot-loading DVD drive. Because I rarely ever use a DVD drive in this thing. Only to install the operating system, usually. This case does have USB up here and things like that, but it's still very cheap. I mean, if you just look at the metal here, look at that. Look at this. That's cheap. That's very, very cheap. And the screws aren't exactly snug. I mean, look at this. That's pretty bad. I mean, the screw holes are stripped like crazy. They're just stripped out. It's cheap. This is the very definition of cheap and nasty. So I'll get the side panel open when you show you the rest of this thing. Here's a, here's a side panel. You can make fake thunder with it all day. Here's the other side panel. Very cheap, nasty, flimsy metal. Chinese metal. I mean, look at this. But here we are. It's an absolute mess of cables in here. Got a gigabyte motherboard in here with an Ad with an Intel Atom D525 on it. Four gigabytes of RAM in here. And I'm using a Dell power supply to power the whole thing, since an Atom processor doesn't require that much power, and that was the whole point of using it, is that it was a low-power machine with, you know, a decent amount of SATA ports. As you can see, I have five hard drives in this machine. I'm thinking about getting rid of one hard drive and putting an SSD in there for the boot drive because as nice as this old 40 gig Western Digital is, um, I don't want to risk uh, it just croaking all of a sudden. I really don't. So <clears throat> I think what I might do is just take the SSD out of the work out of the uh, computer here and stick it in here and put the 40 gig drive into this computer right here. Maybe put Windows XP on there and use it that way. So, there you have it. Um, I've thought about changing out the power supply, uh, but I don't know how short the cables are. We'll find out once I put it in the other case. The, the thing I'm worried about is that this is a Dell power supply, and these Dell power supplies don't have the longest cords in the world, and I'm not sure. Since that's a bottom mounting case, I'm not sure if the cords will reach, so I might end up having to pull a power supply from another system and use use that for the time being. <clears throat> Which is fine, but, you know, I obviously prefer to do something else. You know, but what what can you do? Let's see how this goes. The first thing I did was, of course, to uh, download Clonezilla from the, the website. And I'm going to use that to uh, move the 40 gig uh, hard to move the data on the 40 gig hard drive in the server over to the 40 gigabyte SSD. It's perfect because it's an exact size match, so it won't be too much trouble. I can just clone it and that be it. So what I'm what's amusing of why I'm filming this and what's amusing is I have some Memorex Pocket CDRs here. Clonezilla will fit on one of these because of the size. So let's burn a tiny CD, shall we? Look at that. Same size as a GameCube disc. Oh, that's funny. So, let's stick in the drive here. <laughs> God, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Alright, there's a spindle of them. So, let's uh, burn this disc, shall we? To my downloads folder, and... Uh, Yeah, 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 yeah. So we'll burn this disc. It fits on about half of the tiny CD. That is funny. So let's burn the disc here. I don't know if you can hear the hum of it, but <laughs> that's just amusing to me. Oh well. <laughs> so this is the boot drive for my file server. <laughs> A nice old Western Digital Caviar WD-400. These things are reliable. Very reliable. It's 40 gigabytes, and it's from, as you can see, 
July 2003. So, and it's revision 00, which is crazy. IDE interface, obviously. It's that old. It's a noisy, but a reliable drive. And I'm definitely going to continue to use it until it dies. Because that's what you do with this equipment. You use it until it dies. And that is going to be replaced with a 40 gigabyte SSD. And I have this uh, 40 gig drive installed in the machine, being prepared to clone onto this SSD you saw in a previous video. I have not used this very much. But it will go into that server, and it will be wonderful. So, wonderful. So let's turn this on and give it a clone. You can usually hear just how whiny that drive can be. One thing I almost forgot to mention about this case, the one that uh, is the one that's being replaced. Look how much you can see out of the back. Look at the lack of support that everything has. Look at this. I can bend this metal that the board is mounted on pretty freely. There's just not much back here at all to hold everything up. So if you have a heavy board and heavy cards and everything, it'll bend this metal very easily. And I don't like that very much, so, yeah. Definitely a good thing this thing's being replaced. Well, here we are clone zillaing everything. So I'll check and repair the file system. Create, create partition proportionally. And there we go, cloning the disk. Should not take that long at all. What is this formatted as? I have no idea. But start. It's doing a it's doing a fisk on the disk. Linux is good at that. <laughs> So first it'll check the hard drive to make sure nothing went kaput in the file system. Then I'll have it copy everything over, just clone the disk completely over to the SSD. I'll take one hard drive out of there. Eventually I'm going to get a Hitachi 2 terabyte drive and stick it in the server. But for now I can deal with three 1 terabyte drives. It's not so bad. Here are the hard drives that are in the server. I have three Western Digital 1 terabytes. This is very expensive nowadays with the hard drive with the hard drive prices skyrocketing lately. This is one expensive set of hard drives right now. It's worth a lot of money since Western Digital got hit hard. And the fourth drive was a Hitachi one terabyte drive. Now this drive actually I got a screw stuck in it right there. If anybody knows how to fish those things out, please let me know because it's a pain in the ass to have those in there. Um but this is the one I'm going to pull aside and use in another computer build of some type because I need more hard drives. I can deal with having three terabytes in my setup instead of four. I'm not really missing it. I'm not really missing a damn thing to be honest with you. Eventually, I'm just going to get some Hitachi two terabyte drives and fill fill the server up with them. Not in that case, but you know what I mean. But anyhow, those are the hard drives that are going to be in these three Western Digitals are going to be in the server. Here's the Dell power supply. And there are the specs of it. It is a 200 watt power supply. <laughs> so there you have it. It's pretty damn well built, if I might say myself. I mean, you can see how big some of the things in there are. Look at that transformer. There you go, and look how huge that choke is. Gigantic. There's a little mini ITX port I use for my server. As you can see, it is quite small. Here's a hard drive for comparison. Very tiny board. But it has four SATA ports and one IDE channel. And IDE is important if you want to have five hard drives in this thing. 
which is exactly what I was doing. There you have it. That's what's going to go into this micro ATX case. There we are. I have the board installed in the new case, and the power supply just kind of sitting in here because I need to see if the uh, uh, get over here, you. The ATX connector is long enough to reach over there, and it appears that it at a stretch it is, but I really have to pull on it. But I really have to pull on it for that to fit in there. That's a little bit awkward. I might be able to pull it off. If not, I'll use a different power supply. Okay, so it actually does fit. I'm pleasantly surprised. I got the Dell power supply in there. And these just barely these just barely have enough room to get into both the uh, P4 connector and the 20-pin uh, ATX connector on this board. That's just, that's really pushing it, but hey, I got it. And I'm happy because I like these Dell power supplies. Funny part about this one, though, is that there are no vents on the bottom. So this filter down here and this vent are kind of useless for the time being until I need to get a better power supply. But there are fans on the front here. So this power supply will be cooled by, well, hot hard drive air, I guess. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> it's probably run hot hard drive air through its internals before, so it's lasted this long. Keep on trucking. And the next step, of course, is to put the hard drives in. And I think Lee and Lee has improved upon their design with the K7B very much with this one. What they've done is they've actually made parts of the uh, hard drive uh, cages detachable with thumb screws like this. So I need to take the whole entire cage out, so I'm going to... These are actually torched pretty good, so i got to get a screwdriver in here and uh, loosen them a little bit. So you can just unscrew all these. Take the cage straight out. And stick your hard drives in. How awesome is that? I love that. That is a, just... Bravo, Lee and Lee. Bravo. I love this. Now there's a uh, three drive. You can put three drives down here, and that's what I want to do here. I want to put three drives. So there's another couple of screws you have to undo here, and they're also torqued pretty damn good. Jeez, jeez, Louise, Lee and Lee. There we go. This is a lot nicer than the than the uh, K7B where you have to turn the case over, uh, unscrew the entire cage from the bottom, and just pull the whole thing out. I mean, it's it's just the most inconvenient thing in the world. Where on this you can actually just you do everything with thumb screws. So the next Lee and Lee case I get, I'm going to make sure it has this type of hard drive cage design because this this is beautiful. There we go. I got the hard drive cages out. I didn't have to pause the video or nothing. Got everything out just like that. Okay, so all the hard drives are in their cage. And they use these gigantic screws, as you can see. Let me show you one of them. Lee and Lee really outdid themselves on this. Look at this. You can actually thumb them in and then tighten them all down with a uh, screwdriver or something. The next Lee and Lee case I get that's full ATX, it's having this design. No questions asked. This this is awesome. And here we are. The whole thing's been put together. All the SATA cables have been put in. There's the SSD with three other hard drives. The Dell power supply and everything plugged into the Gigabyte board here. Now the only thing that's missing from here is a DVD drive. And... I don't know what to put in here. I'll find something and stick it in here. And there we are. We have a black Pioneer DVD drive in the front. This is a rather long drive in the back, too, and it kind of makes it cramped for these cables up here. But that's all right.
and this is the case all assembled and everything. Front of it here. Looks very much like the K7B does, only it's a hell of a lot better design. Except I wish these had a port cover. That's gross. Only I wish these had a port cover. Fan the top. And there you have it. The silver on this case is nice looking, I think. So, let's plug it in. I'll probably have to reconfigure F-Stab in Linux, but just so it knows that that drive is no longer there. And we'll go from there. Okay, past all the things that need to be repaired. Here's where it's going to sit, right back here behind everything, out of the way. And let's just give it a power on test and see how it goes, but first I need to plug in the display and everything. Okay, I have everything hooked up to where it's supposed to be to give this thing a test. I've got the mouse and the keyboard hooked up, monitor, everything, so let's turn on the power strip, start her up. There it goes. Let's see if it complains at me. There you go. It should boot into Debian testing. Let's use a DVD drive, that's good. Let's see if it boots up from anything. Or if it's going to have a fit. <laughs> It doesn't seem to be booting, so I'm going to What is this thing doing? Let's see what it sounds like when it starts up first. Do all the drives start up? It sounds like it. Well, I don't know for sure. Hit the Lee on the keyboard. There we go. <sighs> what are you doing, BIOS? What are you doing? It sees everything. It sees the three drives and the SSD. Maybe it's not booting from the right one. Yeah, it's not booting from the right one. There we go. That's why. That little problem should be fixed now. Boot. Boot, boot, boot. Here it goes. Yeah, there we go. Debian. And there you have it. Whoa. Yeah, it went derp. <laughs> FSEC died with an exit status 8. I bet it's complaining that it doesn't have a drive. Yeah, it, it's, it was unable to resolve a UUID on here. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I gotta fix this crap. So I gotta fix uh, FSTAB. Okay, so I fixed the FSTAB issues. And we're going to boot again, and it's probably going to do an, uh, an, a fisk on one of the drives, like it said it was going to in the beginning there. Let's see what it does. Uh, I said enter. There we go. Check forced. There we go. Yep, 
Yep, yeah, it's gonna f. It's gonna fisk a uh, really big hard drive. <laughs> oh man, that's a one terabyte drive. It's fisking too. That's gonna take a while. Well, at least we know it's working. So I would call this a success. At least now you guys can see the that the hard drive LED is not hooked in properly at all. <laughs> That's funny. Hmm. Whatever. There we are. I got the hard drive light hooked in the right way around. So you can actually see it's glowing red now. The power LED isn't lit litting up though. Lit, lit up. Derp. That's awfully odd. Okay. There, I got the LEDs hooked up properly now. There you have it. The power light and the hard drive light. I had to cancel the fisk, so let's see if it actually fisks again. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, it, it's just it just fisks again next time you reboot if you cancel it. So I'll let it fisk and it'll be all good. But since it's being fisked, you can watch the hard drive light. To stay constantly lit like that. <laughs> Although I think it stays constantly lit anyway for some reason. Just make sure the power of the DVD drive works. Yep, it works fine. Well, there you have it. One new server case. And it's one of my it's one of the favorite cases that I own right now, actually. Absolutely spectacular case. Thank you so much, Grateful 42. This is an awesome, awesome case. Um and it'll be this case will last me a long time, I can tell. So again, thank you very, very much. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this uh server case upgrade and uh a little bit of maintenance to it and yeah, have a good one, everybody.